HIV, or human immunodeficiency virus, is a retrovirus that targets the body's immune system. One of the proteins responsible for the replication of HIV is HIV reverse transcriptase. Here, we can see the complex bound to genetic material that is undergoing reverse transcription. This is the process by which the virus replicates its genome from RNA to DNA. When a person is infected with HIV, the virus targets the body's immune system, destroying helper T cells and macrophages, which help fight off infection. Without treatment, this can lead to the development of AIDS, or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. However, HIV can only be spread by coming into contact with certain bodily fluids from another infected person. Understanding how HIV uses reverse transcriptase to replicate its genetic material can provide us with clues on how to combat the disease. More on that later. When HIV infects a host cell, it must first convert its single-stranded RNA genome into a double-stranded piece of viral DNA. This is where reverse transcriptase comes into play. There are two active sites on the enzyme, the polymerase site and the nuclease site. At the polymerase site, viral single-stranded RNA is used as a template to synthesize a new piece of single-stranded DNA. This forms an RNA-DNA complex. Next, this complex moves through the nuclease site, where the two strands are separated by cleaving the RNA into pieces. The single-stranded piece of DNA then moves back to the polymerase site to begin synthesis of a complementary strand. The final product is a piece of double-stranded DNA that contains all of the virus's genetic material. Once this has happened, the viral DNA can be integrated into the host chromosome. Here, it can be transcribed, leading to the production of more viral particles. Reverse transcriptase is a heterodimer comprised of two subunits, P66 and P51. The bigger subunit, P66, contains the active sites of the enzyme, while the smaller unit, P51, provides structural support to the protein. First, we'll discuss the polymerase site of the P66 subunit. The P66 subunit is comprised of four subdomains, the palm, finger, thumb, and connection. Together, they resemble a hand, which initiates the polymerization mechanism by opening and closing. Three negatively charged aspartate residues located in the palm subdomain are responsible for binding two divalent atoms, which can be either magnesium or manganese. These positively charged atoms form favorable interactions with phosphate groups, helping to stabilize the incoming nucleotides. When an incoming DNA nucleotide approaches the enzyme, the thumb subdomain undergoes a conformational change and opens to allow the DNTP to rest within the polymerase site. Once it is in the binding site, both the finger and thumb subdomain close, holding the nucleic acid in place. This aligns the two adjacent nucleotides, creating a phosphodiester bond. Once this bond has been formed, the two subdomains open, allowing pyrophosphate to be released. The new strand of DNA moves down the enzyme and the cycle continues. Here, reverse transcriptase is bound to a piece of DNA. The DNA complex is positioned in the palm subdomain as shown here. You can also see the nearby thumb subdomain and finger subdomain responsible for stabilizing the complex. These are the three aspartate residues responsible for stabilizing the phosphate groups on the incoming nucleotide. Here, you can see how these residues help to position the phosphate group of the new nucleotide near the 3' OH group of the new strand. Once this has occurred, a new phosphodiester bond can be created and the cycle continues. At the nuclease site, the DNA-RNA complex is broken apart and the RNA is removed by a hydrolysis reaction. The nuclease site uses aspartate and glutamate residues to coordinate metal ions that do two things. First, these metal ions stabilize the negative charges of the nucleotide's phosphate groups. Secondly, they activate nearby water, making it a good nucleophile. Water can perform a nucleophilic attack, successfully cleaving the phosphodiester bond between RNA nucleotides. The hydrogen bonds between DNA-RNA base pairs are broken, and the cleaved RNA leaves the enzyme. The new single-stranded DNA can then move back to the polymerase site to begin synthesis of a second strand. Although there is no cure or vaccine for HIV, many HIV-positive people are able to live relatively normal lifespans if given the proper medication. One set of drugs called nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, or NRTIs, help block the polymerase activity of the enzyme. These compounds are analogs of naturally occurring deoxynucleotides, meaning they have similar chemical structures. 
unlike normal DNA nucleotides, NRTIs lack the 3' hydroxyl group required for DNA chain extension. For example, zidovudine is an NRTI that mimics thymidine. Their chemical structures are almost exactly the same. However, zidovudine has an N3 group on the 3' carbon instead of an OH group. As a result, synthesis of viral DNA terminates and the virus is not able to replicate its genetic material.